Maverick Physical Therapy Transformational Zone 1 of the left foot and ankle running the, the base pass. So we'll have a skeletal model. We've got the rubberized model for the left foot there. So my apologies, we'll, we'll get ourselves set up well. But we've talked about in our previous episodes, we've got that inverted kind of um, uh, position going on in terms of the right foot and the ankle complex, which when it comes to the left foot, uh, creates uh, an environment <clears throat> in which it's very even. So in terms of the left foot and ankle right here, we're kind of on this on this angle right here. So we run out of in the frontal plane motion pretty quickly uh, due to the fact that we're kind of angulated based on our trajectory and the speed that we're moving downhill and to the right right there. So left foot and ankle, uh, mobility from forefoot, midfoot to rear foot, takes uh, takes on a new um, kind of interesting kind of course and its response and reaction up to the hip and that when we land we're still going to be landing because of our transition from TZ2 we're still going to be landing kind of in an inverted uh, kind of position left lateral uh, to middle of the the forefoot though so throughout the mid um, uh, so, if we're looking at the tarsal metatarsal joint right here, we've got the metatarsals, we've got the phalanges. We'll land on the outside of the foot, kind of in an inverted position. Um, and on an everted position, kind of on the surface of the ground, which is going to then allow us to make our transition, so eversion of the forefoot down into the ground, which is gonna enable us to run on a slack a lot quicker because of that angulation down. We will get dorsiflexion at the tarsal metatarsal joint right here. So basically about this guy right there. So again, that's the divide between the midfoot and the, and the forefoot. So we're getting that motion, we're getting this motion, and we're getting a little relative abduction. So it's kind of gapping on the inside there. As that midfoot, continues to then ever it's going to bypass the forefoot so midfoot is going to be in the frontal plane everting which is going to uh, which is going to pass up the forefoot which is then going to give us relative inversion at the tarsal metatarsal joint continued abduction continued dorsiflexion and at that tail navicular junction so the site of where the midfoot and the rear foot join right here <clears throat> we initially are going to, relative to each other, we're going to have the midfoot moving faster than the rear foot, which gives us a little of this, this motion like wringing out a washcloth. <clears throat> and it's at that, that mid-tarsal joint right there that we're actually going to have relative eversion, abduction, and dorsiflexion before the rear foot passes up, hopefully, if we have a healthy individual, that rear foot then is going to pass up the midfoot, which is then going to give us, uh, as the talus plantar flexes and shoots down and in, and then unlocks the subtalar joint right there, we're going to get relative eversion, abduction, dorsiflexion at the subtalar joint, <clears throat> as the midtarsal joint has been unlocked, and as we get relative inversion at the midtarsal joint. So we end up getting this motion even though that heel is more than likely not going to be in contact with the ground there either, we still get the reverse effect and the same chain reaction biomechanics ultimately as walking, except it happens in reverse order, and that changes then from heel to toe as we make our transition out. So we're not landing on our heel, the lateral aspect of our foot as we would in walking, and then making our transition, it's distal, to proximal and then proximal to distal through our transformational zones and we'll we'll take a look at that a little bit more there as well so as we're in that angulated position then that subtalar joint eversion abduction and dorsiflexion will set off this this reaction which then the mortise will gap and splay the tibia femoral joint will open up which will allow the anterior translation of the tibia forward and the way that the talus is set up it's thinner distal 
opens up uh, and becomes wider, more proximal. So slides open and forward, gathers a little bit more stability for us. So anterior medial, and we get this right rotation then of the tibia. So this internal rotation then enables us to get the right motion of flexion, abduction, and internal rotation at the knee, as well as then up the chain at the hip. And due to the nature of the frontal plane facilitation of the everted, <clears throat> as that has changed terrain right there because of the speed and the trajectory at which we're moving, getting sucked out to the, uh, to the outfield or out and beyond the base pass right there, we run out of slack and hurry in the frontal plane. And so proprioceptive feedback wise, we've got to be super dialed in, super stable, super functionally strong with regards to um, transverse plane motion uh, at uh, the foot and the ankle complex in regards to the subtalar joint, the midfoot, the rear foot. We just, uh, it's a different process of uh, running out of slack and overall just a different pre-positioned position that we're, uh, that we're going to be in. And so even though we land momentarily in an inverted position to, in, the, in the forefoot to get things started, the ground and terrain wise, we are uh, in an inverted or an everted, kind of sloped down and in, and down and away, uh, down and in I should say, um, uh, kind of position right there, that even though again we land kind of inverted, because of the terrain that we're in, we're everted, and we're getting further eversion, if that makes sense. So a little complex and complicated right there, but all in all, uh, definitely a big part of this story in preventing our labral-related pathologies at the hip, uh, tearing up and developing a lot of friction within the, the groin complex, uh, the hip flexor complex, uh, the quads, as well as the Achilles, um, and the uh, and the calf complex right there so pretty cool and interesting stuff and the motion that we get at the left foot and ankle not only is that going to affect the left hip that's going to affect the right lower extremity as well tz2 of the hip coming on up